What does a barber, a hole in a roof, and a paralyzed man have to do with forgiveness in Jesus? Keep watching and find out with us in week one of Jesus Is. What is up, students? Hey, I'm so thankful you've joined us for another midweek study, but I'm especially excited about tonight because tonight we're starting something new. We're starting a new series called Jesus Is, and what we're going to do over the next couple of weeks is we're going to look at the person and Savior of Jesus Christ. But before we really jump into it tonight, I want to tell you a, a funny story from college. So when I was in college, I lived with a guy named Paul, and Paul was pretty OCD, and he was especially particular about his bed. And I had another roommate named John who wanted to be a barber. He's a barber today. Um, and at the time, he would give guys haircuts on the floor all the time. So one night, he gave a bunch of guys haircuts. And it looked like outside of my room, somebody had like skinned a cat. I mean, there was so much hair. And so another friend of mine, Luke, and myself sort of thought to ourselves, let's mess with Paul. So we got a broom, and we got a pan, and we swept up all the hair. And we pulled back Paul's covers and put all the hair on his bed. And then we put the covers back. And another interesting thing about Paul is he's sort of a night owl. He would study late into the night and come back to the room after everyone else had gone to bed. And so I was sitting in bed waiting for Paul eagerly to come into the room. Here comes Paul. He sort of stumbles into the room and pulls back the covers. And in the darkness, I could hear as everything got ugly quick. Paul was out for blood. He was furious because somebody had put a ton of hair in his bed. He was mad. I mean, real mad. And it wasn't long before Luke and I realized, okay, we probably took this too far and we had to ask for forgiveness. Maybe you're like me and you've done something before where you quickly realize I have taken this too far and I need forgiveness. I want to ask you tonight, and obviously you can't respond to me right now, but I want to ask this question and I want you to think about it for a second. Is it easier for you to ask for forgiveness or to give someone forgiveness? For me personally, it's probably a lot easier to give someone forgiveness because I know uh, as, as a person, I've done many things wrong in my life. And so I know uh, it's just better for me not to hold on to it and just go ahead and forgive someone. But it's a lot harder to ask for forgiveness because it's embarrassing to go to someone and say, hey, I've messed up. I've done something wrong and I need you to forgive me. Whichever one it is to you, I want you to think about something interesting about forgiveness. Here's the thing. The only person who has the power to forgive you is the person that you wronged, right? The only person who has the power to forgive you is the person that you've wronged. You can't go to somebody else and say, hey, this is what I did to so-and-so, and will you forgive me for this? They'll say, of course I forgive you, because you didn't do anything to me. But the only person who really has power over forgiveness in this situation is the person that you wronged, right? So I want you to think about this for a second. I'm sure all of you have been through some situation like that before. Maybe today you're struggling with wondering, okay, I, I need forgiveness from someone, but I don't know what to do. Or maybe you're thinking, I have someone who needs my forgiveness, but I'm not so sure I want to give it to them. All of us are dealing with forgiveness in one way or the other. So what I want us to do today is I want us to look at someone who knows a lot about forgiveness, and that's Jesus. So if you were raised in church, or maybe you stumbled upon this video and you've never stepped foot in a church before, all of us have some idea and concept of who Jesus is. Maybe you think he's just a nice guy or a good teacher or a carpenter, or maybe he's that guy who walked on water. All of us have at least some understanding or thoughts of who Jesus is. But over the next couple of weeks, what I want us to do is ask ourselves, who is Jesus really? So I want to ask you right now, who do you think Jesus is? Who do you think Jesus is? This is a question that has been asked for thousands of years. In fact, if you've got your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. And in this, Jesus has begun teaching and people know who he is. And he comes to his disciples and his friends and he asks them a really interesting question. Starting in verse 13 of Matthew chapter 16, this is what he says. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is. So here he goes, he's talking to his disciples and he asks them, who do people say I am? Well, they replied, some say John the Baptist, 
Some say Elijah and others say Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. So here Jesus poses this question. Hey, who do people say I am? And his disciples respond with a bunch of different answers. Some say uh, John the Baptist, some say Elijah, some say Jeremiah, or, or one of the other prophets. And while these answers aren't necessarily wrong, right? A prophet is someone who speaks to and for God, and Jesus did in fact speak to and for God. They're also not exactly right. See, Jesus is more than just a good teacher or a prophet. He is in fact God, And so he looks to his disciples and he does something that in, in all of our lives at one time or another, we're going to have to answer this question. Listen to this in verse 15. Jesus turns to his disciples and then he asks them, who do you say that I am? Verse 16, Simon Peter answers, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Peter gives two answers here to Jesus' question of who do you think I am? Peter says, number one, you are the Messiah. And the Messiah actually is, the someone who would, is someone who would come and would free God's people from their bondage and sin. And then the second thing he says is he's, he says, you're the son of the living God. Now, this isn't any small statement. This is a big thing to say about Jesus. He says, you're not just some, good, some guy who's come to teach and some prophet. You are, in fact, God's son. This would have gotten him in a lot of trouble in some people's minds. But I want us to look at another story real quickly about Jesus. And that's in Mark chapter 2, starting in verse 1. And this is after Jesus has been teaching and healing for some time. Uh, he's probably healed some blind people and here's healed some paralyzed people. Uh, he's even gone as far as bringing people back from the dead. And so Jesus is at this point almost a celebrity. People know who he is. They want to hear him teaching. And they also really want to be healed by him. Mark chapter 2 starting in verse 1 says, When Jesus returned to, Caper to Capernaum several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room, even outside the door. While he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, so they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. And seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, My child, your sins are forgiven. But some of the teachers of religious law who were sitting there thought to themselves, what is he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking. So he asked them, why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven or stand up, pick up your mat and walk? So I will prove to you that the son of man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, stand up, pick up your mat and go home. And the man jumped up, grabbed his mat, and walked out through the uh, walked out through the stunned onlookers. They were all amazed and praised God, exclaiming, "We've never seen anything like this before." I'm guessing this man was so excited to see Jesus as his friends get up on top of this house and tear a hole in it and start to lower him down. I, I imagine he sees Jesus and he's thinking, "This is my chance. This is the guy who heals people. He's going to heal me too." And then Jesus turns to him and says, your sins are forgiven. I'm sure the man was thinking, uh, that's great and all, but I'm not here to, to receive forgiveness of sins. That's not why I'm here. I'm, I'm here because I want to walk again. So why is Jesus offering him forgiveness of sins? Did, did this man do something wrong to him? Did he, did he do something behind his back that maybe we don't see? Well, well, no, we don't necessarily see that. I think there's something bigger going on here. You see, like we said a minute ago, the only person who has power to forgive is the person that you've wronged. So why is Jesus offering forgiveness of sins if this man has never done anything wrong to him in person? Well, if we know anything, it's that God created the universe and he created this world and he created us and all things on this world. And so whenever we wrong someone, it's not only a sin against ourselves, but it's a sin against the creator of all things. So when you cheat on your test, that's a sin against God. When you talk about someone behind their back, that's a sin against God. When you talk back to your parents, that's a sin against God. Yes, all of these things are a sin against God and it puts us at war with him. So when Jesus tells us, man, your sins are forgiven, he's doing more than just saying, I'm a, I'm a good teacher, I'm a good healer. But he's actually explaining to this man 
I am God himself. He says, I'm not just a teacher. My authority comes from God because I am God. And then just to prove his point, he tells the man, I want you to go ahead and get up, take up your mat and walk out of here. It's an amazing story, right? Jesus says, I'm more than just a teacher. I'm more than just a healer. I'm more than just some guy who you've heard about. I'm more than this famous dude who's claiming to be a good prophet. No, I am in fact the son of God. And if that's true, get up from your mat and I want you to walk away. There are a lot of people throughout time who have said, if Jesus isn't the son of God, then what? But I want to ask you a question today. If what Jesus said here is true, if Jesus is in fact not just a teacher or a healer or a prophet, but is in fact the son of the living God, then what does that mean for you and me? If Jesus is who he says he is, what does that mean about your faith? If Jesus is who he said he is, what does it mean for your daily routine? If Jesus is who he says he is in the middle of this quarantine, what does that mean for our hope in tomorrow? The real question I want to ask you is, if Jesus is who he says he is, if in fact Jesus is God, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? You see, many of us are sitting around with this belief that Jesus is God, but we don't know what to do. Or maybe we do know what to do, but we're not willing to do it. No matter where you are in your faith journey, I want you to know something today. The same thing that was true then is true now. And it can change your life like nothing has ever changed your life before. Jesus is God. And he offers you and me forgiveness of our sins. The only person who has the power to forgive is the person that you've wronged. All of us at one time or another have wronged Jesus. By the way that we live, the way that we speak, the way that we think, we have waged ourselves against Jesus. But Jesus offers us forgiveness through his sacrifice. And if it's true... It means everything. It means absolutely everything. So here's my final question to you tonight. Who do you say Jesus is? Do you believe he's the son of God? Do you believe he is the one and true son of the living God? If so, what are you going to do about it? Let's pray together. Father, I'm so thankful for today. I'm thankful that a man came through the roof of that house. And that day Jesus made an exclamation to the world that he is in fact the son of God. Father, I'm thankful that in these times of uncertainty, we can have the certain truth that you offer forgiveness of our sins, that you heal us, and that you have the power to destroy or to forgive. And God, you choose forgiveness. You choose love. You choose grace. We're thankful for you. And it's in your son's name that we pray. Amen.